Hello everybody, this is the Christmas message for the year 2013. As you can tell, we're in a different home. This is a home that the Lord, I uh, believe, is going to uh, make a way for us to have. This is a home of a friend's house, which we're staying at until they sell this house. And we're praying that the Lord will, will provide a way for us to buy this home sits on 125 acres of land, uh, nice, big, beautiful 2,000 square foot home. Uh, it, it's, it's wonderful to be out here as compared to the apartment we were, we were in, which was just a one bedroom. So we're blessed at this Christmas. And so let's get into the message. Let's start with prayer. Father God, we invite you in. And Father Jesus, we invite in the Holy Spirit. And I pray that you just use me, Father God, to bring your message on your birthday. I pray that everyone is blessed by this. Eyes will be open, ears will hear, and the Holy Spirit will move in you. And it's going to be a good thing for you. Amen. Okay, today we're going to start at Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, and we're going to start with the birth of Christ. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, betrothed meaning uh, it was an arranged marriage, betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being a man, being a just man, and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quickly and quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to make Mary your wife. For that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. And this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. And the prophet said, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph woke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. <clears throat> okay, what's this mean when they say he knew her not? Well, that means that uh, he, he refused to have intercourse with her until she gave birth to Jesus Christ, who we all know is the Son of God. This is probably the only time in history that a woman has ever become pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Uh, she was a virgin before this happened. So even as she was pregnant with Jesus, she never knew a man. And this is, this is a, a miracle by God. This is how He wanted His Son Jesus Christ to come into the world. He chose Mary because she was an upright and godly woman. And <clears throat> because her genealogy was right. That means she was of a perfect bloodline. Because the child that was going to be born through her was a perfect child. And he had to be perfect to later on uh, be given up for our sins and spill his perfect blood. Okay. Now, this is the story of Christmas. It goes on to tell us 
in uh, the second chapter of Matthew that uh, wise men came to Bethlehem of Judea where Jesus was born in a barn, in a manger of a barn. A manger is a, a, no more than a feeding trough for the, for the cattle and for the, for the animals. And it goes on to tell us that they brought gifts for the child and for the, for the parents. And they were recognizing that he was the promised king of God, the Savior. It was a, it was a time of, of, of tremendous celebration for anybody who, who followed God and was of God and pleasing to God and upright in God's eyes knew that God had promised to send a Savior which was going to save us from our sins, basically. <coughs> Excuse me. Jesus Christ bridges the gap between us and Jehovah God. In other words, we could not come to God unless we were totally without sin and we all know that we have all fallen short of the grace of God. And so, now Jesus Christ has come, He died on the cross, He spilled His perfect blood as the, as the perfect lamb, the perfect sacrifice for us, and now He represents us and forgives us of our sins so that we may come to the Father sinless and enter into His heaven. Okay, this is the story that we need to sit down with at Christmas and share with our families. It's a, it's a happy time. This is why people bring gifts to each other. To, to exchange uh, tidings of joy. Uh, in, in the same way that they did for Jesus and for the mother and father. And <clears throat> But today I didn't really come to you today to explain the story of the birth of Jesus Christ. What I really came here today was was to set the record straight about some things. In the year 2013, uh, you know, 2,000 years, uh, probably just a little less than 2,000 years after Christ uh, died on the cross and was risen from the dead and was uh, sent into heaven was raised up into heaven by his father. We invented something called uh, Santa Claus. And this is something that God has really laid on my heart. And I know right away you're going to say to yourself, oh, here we go. Here we go. I want you to listen to this message. I need for you to listen to this message, and God wants you to listen to this message. Because we cannot celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ and Santa Claus. It does a couple of things. Number one, it takes away from the birth of our Savior. It takes away from His birth. It takes away from the celebration. The real meaning of Christmas. The real meaning of Christmas, people, is not giving gifts. We, we, the stores, the uh, merchants, uh, all the stores. We have Black Friday, and then we have Cyber Monday, and we have all these sales going on and all these advertisements on television and it is so that the merchants, the stores can get into the black, what we call the black. And it is the most profitable time of the year for all of the merchants and their stores. 
So we invented something called Santa Claus. And what we've done is we have told our children since, they're, since they were old enough to understand that there is a man who lives in the North Pole who has eight tiny reindeer that takes off on Christmas Eve in his sled and flies all the way around the world delivering gifts to all the good little girls and boys. That's a crock. Do you know that in my town, I have only met one person who tells his children the truth about Christmas. He does not try to put a false sense of hope into a child, into his children. What he does is he basically tells his children the truth. And this is what we need to do. We need to start telling our children the truth about Christmas and tell them about the birth of Jesus Christ and teach them about God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And don't tell them about Santa Claus because it is a lie. It is a lie. When your children get old enough to understand that there is not a Santa Claus, do you remember what you did when you realized that there was no Santa Claus? You looked at your mom and dad and you said, well, my mom and dad's been lying to me. My mom and dad hasn't been telling me the truth. It's been a made-up tale. And it hurt you to know that there was no Santa Claus. It hurt you to know that there was no body living at the North Pole who had a shop who made toys all year. It hurt you to know that there were no reindeers that flew and pulled a sled with a man in a red jacket and a great big white beard. This is hurtful to a child. And you have done nothing except teach this child how to lie. I'm sorry, but that's what we have done. We have taught our children to lie, and we have taught them about disappointment. Wouldn't it be easier Number one, easier, and number two, truthful. If you just told your kids the truth, if you just told them the truth. Hold on just a minute, I've got to get something. I've got a few notes here that I that I took. Usually I don't use notes, but I've, I've got some notes here. And uh, there's some things that I wanted to talk about that of course, I didn't. I didn't want to forget. Uh, it's more important. It's it's easier for us as adults to tell our children that there is a Santa Claus instead of us as adults facing the fact that when it comes right down to the end of your life and your spirit leaves this body that you're going to have to face this man whose birthday we celebrate every December the 25th. In other words it's easier for us to ignore it than it is to face it. And most people who are feeling guilty about the way they live their lifestyle don't want to tell their children about, Santa, uh, about Jesus Christ. They'd rather make up this story about Santa Claus and go on about their sinful life. We've turned Christmas from being a time of celebrating Jesus Christ's birthday 
into a shopping spree that seems to never end. We use Christmas to buy expensive gifts to impress our family members, our wives, our spouses, our bosses, and it doesn't really get us anywhere. We, it doesn't really impress anybody that you have bought this very expensive gift for someone because a couple of months after Christmas it's all been forgotten about. Except for the bills that you still have to pay on your credit cards. Of course the merchants and the stores they're very appreciative to you. You know they they would uh, they would uh, hate it if you stop telling your children about Santa Claus and about this wonderful man that lives on the North Pole because people would buy less gifts if they knew that it was about Jesus' birthday. They want to keep Jesus out of the picture as long as possible. They want to do whatever it takes to sell merchandise. You see this Christmas tree right here? This brightens up the house. It, it adds glory to Jesus' birthday. Of course, there was no Christmas tree at Jesus' birthday, probably. This was something that was made up by us as we went along. There's a story behind the Christmas tree, but I'm not going to tell you what that story is. This is a time for sitting around the fireplace and getting out the Bible on Christmas Day and reading the story about the birth of Jesus. This isn't a time for piles and piles of gifts. It's good to give some gifts. It's good to give some gifts. And it's okay to give gifts. I mean, the, the shepherds gave gifts. But we have to give gifts not to impress, but give in the spirit of Jesus. We've spoiled our kids rotten. We've spoiled our kids rotten with all this electronic stuff and and everything they ever wanted, we go out and we buy it for them. And that's just not right. Again, I'm not telling you that you can't buy gifts for your kids. It's great that kids receive gifts on Christmas. It's just that we go so overboard with it. We concentrate on the gifts themselves instead of the real meaning of Christmas. And so this Christmas I pray that if you've already told your kids about Santa Claus that you sit them down and you say I'm going to tell you the truth about something. And come clean. Get this lie that you've been telling out of you. Because it's not right for you to lie to your kids and Jesus doesn't like the fact that you're replacing his birthday with Santa Claus. It's good that you have your family over. It's good that you have a big meal together. It's good that you celebrate. But all, all Jesus is asking you to do is remember him. Remember him. This is what it's all about. It's not about all the things that we just listed. And if you put your hope and your faith in Jesus, you need a miracle. You'll get a miracle at Christmas. There is such a thing as Christmas miracles. Miracles happen every day but especially at Christmas, and especially to those who recognize that He is the King. 
Some of you are saying to yourself, well, you know, December 25th was probably not Jesus' real birthday. No, it probably wasn't. More than likely, uh, Jesus was born in the spring. But this is the day that we set aside to celebrate it. This is the time, who knows how it got chosen, but this is the day that we picked to celebrate it. So ceremonially, it is Jesus' birthday. I'm not going to drag this message out. I'm just asking you to start thinking with a clear mind and a clear conscience. Don't, don't lie to your kids no more. Don't lie to your kids no more. Have a good time at Christmas. And this, I mean, you're just going to feel so much better about it. You're going to be doing the right thing. You're not going to be lying anymore. Your children are going to be empowered because they know the truth. Because they know the truth. You're not going to disappoint your children when they find out that there's no Santa Claus. Eventually they're going to find out. And they're also going to figure out, hey, you know what? My mom and my dad told me the truth. My mom and dad told me the truth and they weren't afraid to tell me something different than everybody else was telling their kids. Think about it. Pray about it. Uh, here's one more thing uh, that that I've got here on my list, and, and I'm going to end with this. I know this is a short message. I've seen for the last many, many years, uh, we take the name Christmas, and uh, of course, the first part of Christmas is Christ. And that's some of the proof that, you know, Christmas is about Christ. But when we spell Christmas, we want to shorten it up and we want to kind of abbreviate Christmas. So we put an X, a dash, and M-A-S. And what we've done is we have crossed out Jesus' name, Jesus Christ, and we've just put Mass. M.A.S. X.M.A.S. Jesus, Jesus gets hurt by this. Jesus doesn't want you to cross His name out. It's His birthday. It's His birthday. Leave His name in there. And don't be so lazy to spell out the whole word or name of Christmas. It just makes sense. It just makes sense. The devil would love for you to keep telling your kids about Santa Claus. The devil would love for you to keep marking Jesus' name out of Christmas. He would like for you to do all these things. But if I were you, I wouldn't give the devil the satisfaction. I would do everything I could to displease the devil by following Christ. Now I'm going to do something here. <clears throat> if you feel the Holy Spirit moving in you right now, and you know that what I'm telling you is right, I'm going to say a prayer. And I want you to touch and agree with me right now. Father God, we come to you right now, Lord, asking you for forgiveness. Telling you that we repent of our sins right now, immediately. We are going to start telling our children the truth. We are going to stop making up this story about Santa Claus. 
whether it makes us different from the rest of the world or not. We're going to do the right thing. And we're going to do what's right in your eyes, Father. We're not out to, dis, to, to please the devil anymore. We give our life to you gladly. And this Christmas, we're going to celebrate your birthday. And we're going to be joyful and happy. And we're going to have a smile on our face. And we are going to be set free from this lie that we've been telling. We're going to sit down and we're going to read Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And we're going to read about the birth of our Savior in the four Gospels. And we're going to make this your day. Your day. Hallelujah. I pray you have a merry Christmas. Don't call it holiday season. Don't call it whatever the world's calling it anymore. Call it the birth of Jesus. The celebration of Christ. The celebration of life. The celebration of our Savior coming into the world. I pray that you enjoy yourselves. I pray that you do these things that the Holy Spirit is talking through me about. And if this shook you a little bit, then I pray that you'll change your ways. Amen. I saw a sign in the window that said Mary X M A S. Shoppers are filling up the malls, and it looks like moonlight madness. Santa and all his reindeer are on everybody's mind. Has he been forgotten here at Christmas time? So what's happened to the Christ in Christmas? After all, he's a reason for the holiday. Remember, he's that baby lion in a manger where wise men came from far away. He is our Savior, bringing hope and peace to you and me. So what's happened to the Christ in Christmas? After all, He is our King. There'll be parties after parties I know to celebrate with all our friends There'll be the usual orders and wine Someone will have too much again And there'll be lots of laughter And sharing some good old times but will we talk about Jesus? Is He on our minds? So what's happened to the Christ in Christmas? After all, He's a reason for the holiday. Remember, He's that baby lion in a manger where wise men came from far away. He is our Savior, bringing hope and peace to you and me. So what's happened to the Christ in Christmas? After all, He is our King. Well, there's nothing wrong with shopping. After all, the gifts show our love. And there's nothing wrong with parties and Santa, but let's not forget who's number one. So remember the Christ in Christmas. After all, He's the reason for the holiday. 
Remember he's that baby lion in the manger Where wise men came from far away He is our Savior Bringing hope and peace to you and me So what's happened to the Christ in Christmas After all he is our King so let's remember the Christ in Christmas, after all He is our King.